Hello, I'm Andrew Duncan, and I'd like to welcome you to another Art of Living video. I'm going to show you how to replace the handle uh, on Le Creuset saucepans. Um, over the years, Le Creuset have used a couple of different systems, both of which I'm going to go over with you now. Um, outwardly, they look the same. Inwardly, they're not quite the same. Uh, the model I'm using at the moment is not the, the very latest one, but it does illustrate the point perfectly well. Now, these handles, whether you've got the old wooden handle or this new type of handle, which is made of a heatproof plastic or phenolic, it's rather like Bakelite, um, they are interchangeable, and, um, but they need to be put on the right way. The first job is to remove the old handle, or remove what's left of the old handle. And to do that, you might be lucky and just be able to undo this, but most likely you're going to need some extra leverage. I use a screwdriver, typically, to help me do the job. To undo it, it's a conventional thread, so anti-clockwise. And... and that's the nut taken off, and now we can remove the handle. Now this reveals one of the systems, the two systems that they use. This system is, as you can see, a hook with a thread on the end for the nut. The hook goes into that hole in the saucepan casting, and it's a very neat system. It works very well, and even if the saucepan is quite old, um, you can always put a new, if the hook's maybe corroded or got damaged, you can put a new hook in. It's very good from that point of view. Um, the older system is like this older pan here, where the, instead of being a, um, a rod which is hooked on, it's actually screwed into the, the, the casting. And on the old pans, sometimes I've seen them where that has rusted away to virtually nothing. So that when you go to undo this knob at the end, unfortunately all you do is you twist this shaft and it breaks. Of course that allows you to get the handle off, but then you've got the problem of will you be able to get this thread out of the, out of the end here and put a new one of these rods in. These rods are still available, but... Uh, with this system, you can't always guarantee that uh, the job is going to be successful, I'm afraid. If you do buy uh, a, a handle from us and you find, in actual fact, that it's, when you come to change it, it's no good, of course you can return it to us and we'll give you a refund. <clears throat> um, so, going back to the new one for the moment, I'm going to put the rod hook the rod back in and put the handle on. Actually, before I do that, there's a couple of points I want to make. That is uh, uh, the handle I've just taken off here. And if you look down at uh, this handle here, which is brand new, and at how it would come to you, there's a subtle difference in the way it's, it's the two are shaped. And that's because this has been on a pan and this hasn't. When this has been on a pan, this will look just like that. In other words, the V shape at the top here will be opened out, and this flange here will have been pushed down. And that's okay, that's correct. Because what happens when, you've, when you put a, a new um, handle on, which I'll do now just to illustrate this point, shape that I showed you here has got to come at the top here and it's got to engage in this v-shaped bit here and you've got to get the thread started on here which can be a bit tricky
and because it, it's not going down far enough, I'm going to use a knife blade just to pull the, the thread out enough to hopefully get it started. Hmm. Okay, it's not going on far enough, so manually I'm going to have to try and push this handle on, which normally the thread would do if it would come out enough, which means pushing it up against my body here and pushing it on with a bit of brute force, just getting it started so that there's enough thread exposed there to get the knob back onto the end. Once the knob's back on the started to bite on the thread as it has now, just tightening, tightening it up will do the job that I started by pushing it hard. And this is where you'll need a screwdriver again to give you the extra leverage to close this gap up. Because at the moment there's quite a sizable gap there. I hope that that's visible on the film. And as I tighten it up, so it reduces and reduces. And what I'm looking for is the tightness which, when I put my hand in there firmly and, I'm, and I do that, there's no wobble. At the moment, there's, not, it's, there's, there's still some wobble, so I, I know I've got to tighten it a bit more. And again, I hope you can see on the film that there's virtually no, now very little gap between the, the, end, the ferrule on the handle and the side of the saucer. And now we've got a handle which is absolutely rock solid. When you're at that position, you can't turn it, it doesn't move to any significant degree, it's safe and it's ready to go. The same applies to the old system here. Um, on the old system, the the V-shape that is in here uh, engages on the bottom instead of on the top. So that goes in like that. And then the um, ferrule, the, the, the nut, which you see there, just screws onto the end and locks the handle. Same thing applies, tighten it up until there's virtually no movement left in between the handle and the pan itself. That is it. Thank you very much for watching.